Hi student, this video is brought to you by Saraswati Vidyala Union and hi, this is Prapti. Today we are going to study about the biological practical of standard 12. Now let's see in detail. See in the biological practical, now we are going to study about the part B. In that we are going to study about the spotting. This is the fourth question for the spotting. Already we have seen about the part A. In the part A we have seen about the major and the minor experiment. But right now this is the part B. This part, e, part B it is for the spotting. In this the various spottings are there such as spot A, spot B, spot C, spot D, spot E, spot F, spot G, spot H, spot J and spot I. So all these are the different spottings. But here in this this today's video we are going to study only the part C. See that spotting means what in the spot or spotting that specimens that sample of specimens or the models of that specimen will be in front of you and then you have to observe it you have to write down few points related to that that is known as the spotting. Now in this we are going to study about the spot C first. What is included into the spot C that is identify the plants and comment on its morphological adaptation in aquatic or the xeric habitats. Now let's study in detail about it. Now let's study in detail that is 8 practical so that is study of plants found in xerophytic and aquatic conditions or habitats and comment on their adaptations. Now let's study about the adaptation first. Now what is the adaptation? That means adjustment of plants and animals for their survival and perputations to their environment by means of special structures or function. It is known as adaptation. Means exactly what for living purpose. So the plants or the animals they are making some changes into themselves. That is known as the adaptation. For example, if human being, okay, human being. So during the winter season, so that human being is using sweater, means that human being is adjusted himself as per the environment. So that is indirectly the adaptation. So like the same thing is there, that adaptation means that plants for survival and for the perpetuation purpose, so they are making some changes. So there are special structures or the functions are present in plants that is known as the adaptation. Next concept that is about the xerophytes. Xerophytes means what the plants that grow and survive in desert. Dry conditions of soil and high temperature are called as the xerophytes. In these xerophytes they are showing some adaptations such as to reduce the loss of water due to transpiration, so they are doing adaptation. Some xerophytes show presence of stored mucilage in the plant parts, so that the help in retaining water. Some plants have latex that help retaining water and sealing the place of injury. Now see the examples of the xerophytes such as Euphorbia, Calotropis, Acacia and Opuntia. Now let us study in detail about it. Now let us see about the Calotropis procera. The common name of Calotropis procera it is known as the Rui. Now let us see about the adaptations of this Calotropis procera. The first one it is non succulent drought enduring wild shrub of arid desert and wasteland. Means these plants are present in the region wherever water is present in the less amount. In this the leaves and the young branches are covered by a mealy coating along with hairs which act as an insulating covering. The leaves are thick and somewhat leathery. The plant possesses latex, means what that white fluid like structure is coming out from that leaf. You can see in the diagram I have shown it properly. Now the next plant that is Acacia arabica. So this Acacia arabica it is also known as the bubble. Now let us see about it. It is non succulent zero point means the same thing wherever water is present in less amount over there this plant is available. The leaves are bipinnately compound 
leaflets are very small in size to reduce transpiration. Then the stipules are modified into spine to reduce transpiration and also to protect plants against the marauding or the grazing animals. The older parts of stem are covered over by a thick brown bark. This is laboratory specimens. You can see like this in lab. Now the next specimens that is known as the Apuntia delaney or it is known as the Nagfani. Now let us see points related to that. The first point it is succulent means drought resisting or the enduring xeropites. Second point the stem is flatted, joined, green and it is called as the phyloclade. It takes over the function of photosynthesis because the leaves are modified into spines. Third point the stem that is known as the phyloclade it is fleshy, succulent due to presence of mucilage that retains water means that is known as the water storage tissues. Fourth point phyloclades are with many nodes and internodes. The areoles have one or more spines which represent the modified leaves of axillary branch. Last point, bristles that means trichomes provide protection against grazing animals. This is the laboratory specimens. So in examination we will show you specimen like this and you have to identify it. Means in this species the leaf like structure which is shown so that leaf like structure that is known as the stem. And whatever the spines are present on that stem that are known as the leaves and that leaves are modified leaves because that turns into spines to prevent it from the grazing animals and to reduce loss of water by the process of transpiration. Now the next topic that we are going to study that is known as the hydrophytes. In these the plants that grow in abundance of water are called as the hydrophytes. So what are the characteristics of these such as they are generally adapted to remain biopond and avoid decaying and tearing effects of water. They have developed erenchyma tissue for biopancy. Biopancy means what for floating purpose so these erenchyma tissues are present. See that these plant remains in water but it do not show any harmful effect on the plants. Now what are the examples of this plant? For example, Hydrilla, Valesneria, Ecornia, Pistia, Nilumbo that means Lotus and the last one that is Typha. Now let us see one by one. In that first one that is known as the Hydrilla. Now let us see about the characteristics of Hydrilla. First one it is submerged hydrophyte that means grows entirely under water. Second point it is attached to substrata by poorly developed adventitious roots in fresh water. The stem is slender, soft, it is without mechanical tissues, hence it limbs when taken out of water. Fourth point leaves are thin, membranous and are arranged in rolls. They lack cuticle and stomata. And the last point, the entire plant is covered by mucilage that protect it from rotting effect of water. Valisneria is another submerged hydrophyte. See this, this diagram which is given in your practical notebook. So in that it is given in detail where, are, where is that roots, stem and how is the structure of leaves, branch and the flowers. Now let's study about the next thing that is known as the Ecornia or it is also known as the water hyacinth. Now let's see about the adaptation. It is free floating hydrophyte that grows in fresh water ponds, lakes etc. The stem is short and spongy due to the air in chyma that stores air. It is the offset that grows prostate just below the water surface and serves as means for vegetative reproduction. In this leaves shows 
swollen spongy petioles and arises in clusters at nodes they have waxy coating in addition to cuticle to prevent wetting and rotting in this adventitious roots are also produced in clusters at nodes they act as a balancers they have root pockets root hair are absent in this this pistia is another free, free floating hydrophyte by nilumbo that is lotus is anchored or rooted hydrophyte with floating leaves this is laboratory that bottle specimens so which will keep for examination for spotting purpose you have to observe it and you have to write down few points related to that now the next topic next specimen that is known as the typha this typha it is an amphibious and anchored hydrophyte which grows in marshy places or shallow waters this typha it is also known as the cat tail in this the stem is rhizome you can see in the diagram it is shown that stem is rhizome with adventitious roots and emergent leaves coming out of water surface the leaves are long linear soft spongy thick and sub cylindrical they have erenchyma tissues and the last point the leaves show presence of mechanical tissue and hence they are able to stand erect they have cuticle and stomata on emergent part actually the typha is hygrophyte this is laboratory specimens will keep this for your examination you have to observe and you have to write down few points related to this thanks for watching this video please like share and comment on this video and please subscribe my channel my channel name is prapti banzare and please press bell icon so you will get an another update thank you